right up there in the north of Italy, where the country borders Austria. We're in an area known as the South Tyrol, and over the next four days, we're gonna be riding through this breathtaking landscape in the Shimano e-mountain bike experience. For a big part of this trip, we'll be riding in an area known as the Pale Mountains, more famously known as the Dolomites because of the type of rock found there. They're high, they're wild, and they're stunningly beautiful. Probably every mountain biker's ultimate place to go and ride their bike. For the next four days, we're gonna be taking in the scenery, the history, and the trails in this incredible area. But it's much, much more than that because each and every day, every rider gets to test an e-bike of their choice. And with nine different brands to choose from, it's a crazy mix. It's almost like being in a professional paddock. Add to that the amount of suspension travel, different sizes, different colorways, and of course, different motors because you don't necessarily have to ride a Shimano motor. It's four days overflowing with diversity. It's amazing. From the original group of 110 riders, we've each broken into separate groups to work out each rider's ability on the trail. So you've got easy, medium, and ambitious. So the purpose of this is to make sure each rider gets the best possible time in the mountains. And the trails go from fire roads to actually red and black, quite technical trails, which are steep and also really rocky. Where did you go first? Over these things. You have to hop these, yeah? I am slightly nervous. I'm going to do this test, this technical test in front of 50 people. As I've known in the past, it could all go hideously wrong. Okay, and then across over here. <laughs> Can't believe the cameraman put me on the spot to do that challenge. But as we've seen in the past, even pro riders under the spotlight get a little bit nervous. But there's nothing to be worried about because you can do it as many times as you want to. Early morning start, day one. Uh, we've chosen our two bikes for the day, and today we're gonna have two Shimano motored bikes. Uh, on my right is the Focus Jam Squared. On my left is the Sam Squared. Looking at 29 and 27.5. Vier, drei, zwei, eins. Viel Spaß bei Shimano Ivan Bike Experience 2018. Enjoy the ride. So as I mentioned earlier, this is the ambitious group. Two other groups, the beginners and the fun classes, left earlier in the day. Uh, we've climbed about 1,200 meters so far, which is quite significant, and we're just about to drop onto some pretty cool single track. So yeah, only like uh, half an hour into the ride and getting stuck into it. So we're into some pretty technical routes. It's really nice in these woods. Wow. Whoa, we're on the 378 watt hour batteries and I've got a spare battery on the top of the down tube here. So it's the first time I've ever done this. Apparently you take the cable out, stick that in your pocket. And she should fire up. Boom. I mean, that was what, 30 seconds? And away we go again. Yeehaw! So here we are at Murano, uh, five hours into day one of the Shimano e-mountain bike experience. We've just come down off those mountains behind us and the trails were absolutely prime. Prime single track trails, great stuff. So here we have the first charging station and the riders gonna dump their bikes off. There's a great team here. 
and all the riders now head in to the first lunch stop and get stuck in. Day one so far, what a treat. It had absolutely everything. Fast climbing to the top of the hill, super technical single track, descending on some amazing technical trails. Stop for lunch, batteries are charged, up the mountain in a gondola, onto the open mountain, and then some of the most flowing, amazing single track you will ever see. The landscape 360 degrees around you. Now we're right at the top, and the gang is ready to drop off the mountain. What more can you wish for? So it's not all about slogging your guts up a mountain on an e-bike. Today, as you can see, we've got a shuttle halfway up the mountain to the start of the first stage. And we're really excited about riding a fresh brace of bikes in the mountains, new tracks, new experiences, new scenery. Can't wait to get stuck in. One of the great things about this event is the ever-changing landscape. We've had those beautiful mountains behind us all morning and now we're approaching the pass, 6,000 feet, and there's snow all around us, and we're going into the unknown once again. Could you hold me tight? Wow, right up into the snow line, and as 1990 World Cup cross-country champion Mike Klug just highlighted, there's a little bit of technique involved from time to time on this trip, but wow, look at that background. Absolutely stunning, but you know what? No time to hang around. Now by this point, you must be wondering how on earth do they deal with the batteries on such big days in the mountains? Well, there's a huge support crew which follows us round to round from day to day. And all the batteries from high bike to Shimano, and even the sort of folding batteries, they're all here yeah, in abundance. So you'll never come up short when you're in the mountain. So we're getting our bikes charged up. We're gonna have a spot of lunch. Now this event draws in riders from all over the world and I'm sat here with Nobuyuki from Japan. Nobuyuki, is this the first time you've been to this event? Uh, no, this is second time for me. And uh, really nice event. Uh, organization is uh, perfect. Uh, everything is perfect for me. And do you own an e-bike back home in Japan? Uh, no, I don't have e-bike. E uh, but uh, in the near future, I'd like to buy e, e mountain bike. So do you live in a like in a, in a city? So you don't ride? So you ride a road bike most of the time back at home? Ah uh, yes, uh, in my yeah, yeah I'm living in Osaka, and uh, mostly I ride road bike because uh, mountain is not so close from my house. Mm, but uh, if uh, I have e mountain bike, it's easy to access mountains. Yeah. Day two in the mountains and we've got two new bikes to ride. Uh, on my left hand side we've got a high bike 150 mil travel and that's an air shock absorber and fork on that bike. On my right hand side is the new Ghost Slammer and that's 160 mil travel. Now, the key thing about the Ghost Slammer on my right is as I mentioned it's got 160 mil travel which you might think it's only 10 mil more than the high bike on my left hand side here, but it's more than that. It's actually got coil suspension in it, and that's gonna act quite differently on the trail to the air, which is on the high bike. But it goes deeper than that again. The Ghost has actually got a 29 inch wheel front wheel on it and a 27.5 on the back. So that's gonna have quite an impact on the trail attitude in, in that the big 29 inch front wheel is gonna roll over the rocks and the roots a little bit easier than the smaller tires, but it doesn't just come down to that. Tire choice, how soft the compound is and tires, it all comes into it. Um, one other fact, the Ghost Slammer, it's got a carbon front end to it, so that's obviously gonna have an impact on its trail attitude as well. But one thing that actually strikes the Ghost apart from every other bike here is the fact that it's got 155 cranks in it, so it can be really interesting to see how that works when you're climbing up through rock and route. Earlier on the trip, we rode the Shimano motor on the Focus bikes with different wheel sizes. This time out, we've got the Shimano E8000 step system head to head with the Yamaha PWX. Now the PWX has got five different power modes in it, whereas the Shimano steps has got three power modes in it. So 
there's a good head-to-head -head there in itself. Day three, now we seem to be getting into a pattern of a great breakfast followed by a shuttle ride, e-bike climb, then a great descent in the afternoon. This morning's climb was super steep, definitely the kind of ascent that would be out of reach for me on a non-e-bike at least. Now the great thing is that I can ride in boost mode whereas the guys, the super fit trail guides will ride in trail so everyone keeps together on the rides really well. Um, if you can't get up the steep climbs, there is an alternative route which takes you up by the road. A little bit longer, but at least it makes sure there's something there for everybody on this ride. Now for those of you who are after something a little bit more challenging on this trip in terms of terrain, we've just ridden a technical, a technical train which can only be described as pure gold. So intense, it was amazing. Roots, rocks, definition, severity, all off the charts. Definitely boost mode. Easiest gear all the way up, seat right over the front. What's also been fascinating over the last few days is riding different motors. Now we've ridden Shimano, Yamaha and Bosch and it's interesting how they compare when you ride them out on the trail. For example, how much cadence you, how, how fast you spin the pedals on each motor and what are the strengths of each motor when you're on different trail conditions. I really am in my element being able to try out all these different bikes and you know just having like a 140 bike and a 150 and a 180. Now you'd think that a 180 mil travel has got no right to be on a hill especially on a steep hill climb so it's interesting to know how a bike such as that copes with super steep hill climbs and to be honest with you it's not really that much different to a 150 or a 140. Now we have all different types of riders here in the mountains, the Shimano e-mountain bike experience from people who ride just for fun to professional athletes. Now I'm here with Jose Hermida from Spain who was 2010 world cross country champion and silver medalist at the Athens Olympics in 2004, right? 2004, right. Yeah, what's the uh, e-bikes? What's that all about? <laughs> it's beautiful, beautiful. You know, after 20 years as a professional, uh, with proper bikes, and uh, then I... Oh, whoa, 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 e-bikes <laughs> e e bikes are proper bikes, right? Exactly, exactly, they are proper bikes, exactly, also because uh, you need to push. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's completely different, uh, completely different philosophy, and uh, I, I like a lot. I started to ride my e-bike uh, three years ago from Merida, and uh, now I'm joining, uh, as a brand ambassador, I'm joining uh, this kind of event, e-bikes, and I like. You said there a minute ago you can still push, so you can you still push hard on an e-bike, right? Yes, yes, totally. You know, it's a, you have to cooperate with the bike. The bike needs you, and you need the bike. It's still it's not a motorbike. It's a still a bike. You have to pedal, and uh, well, it's part of my trainings also because sometimes in the morning or most of the times in the morning I go with a with a traditional bike like I used to be in the last 20 years, and then in the afternoon with the e-bike I can go to mountains and make some uh, technique without using energy. It's all about getting. You still trying to learn different skills right and an e-bike lets you do the same skills as a normal bike yeah exactly and um, also your action around your area it's getting uh, bigger and bigger your 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 radius yeah. is getting bigger and uh, yeah you know for uh, for professional rider is a good solution for rest days because in rest days normally you always uh, go for one hour spin around the lake yeah. and now you go one hour spin on the mountains with the e-bike so it's <laughs> It's perfect, and then you're still doing uh, downhills and the best trails around your home. Day four, nice cruisy start to the day. We've got uh, Monte Cristallo on the background and the Dorstein, which is where we're going to be heading for lunch at around one o'clock uh, with the advanced group today. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, final day to press on. Uh -huh. 
Day four, uh, absolutely nailed. Been charging around on these two bikes for about seven hours. We started at eight o'clock this morning. It's now four o'clock in the afternoon. So if you ever think that e-bike riding is short, sharp bursts in the mountains, you've got it totally wrong. These were big days out. Um, the day was actually one of the standout days. Uh, tech, we started off with single track climbing. It got progressively steeper and then we climbed out the trees and then we got these kind of backdrops and it was just something else. Got some food in us, nice good hearty stew and some uh, strudel, obviously with strudel every day. Uh, a couple of coffees and then charging back down the mountains. Do you know what? At the beginning of the day, I genuinely thought that I prefer 150 mil travel over 120 mil travel, particularly in the big mountains. But I think that bike has proved that if you use 120 mil correctly by skipping over stuff, you can actually get away with it and have a load of fun in the process. And remember, before you get to the travel, you've got the tires. These are big 2.8 tires. You can get a considerable amount of pop off those tires and they really do cushion the ride when you're going through rocks and roots. So yeah, I quite like that 120 mil bike. Wow, four days and a ton of bikes later, that was a really intense experience. I mean, where else in the world would you get an opportunity to ride so much different equipment in an environment like that? I think over the last few days, for a lot of people, it's actually taught them, they've learned a lot of things about e-bikes and what they actually want. I mean, it could, there's loads of things. It could be wheel size, it could be travel, it could be color. And also you get to learn what size e-bike is for you. So there's loads of things to learn on an event such as this. Ooh, looks like you're a bit low on battery there. Yeah, the, la the last battery count in, on red. How many times has that happened this week? Uh, the, the week was fantastic. Yeah? Yes, it was uh, great and the trails was great, the weather was great but today and uh, the bikes was great. It's all great. Have you ridden many different bikes this week? Um, I test five bikes. Wow. Yeah. Every day uh, I've got a bike. So there's not many places you get the opportunity to ride so many e-bikes, right? Yes, it's, it's fun to, to test m many e-bikes and different e-bikes and different motors and different reaches and it's wonderful. This guy looks super chilled out. You had a good week? Yes, I had an amazing week. Because? Amazing people, epic place, really, uh, in my opinion, the best mountains in the world. So everything's fine. Perfect. It says it all, I think. So uh, tell us about the week. Ah, it was a great experience because the bikes are all different. Um, uh, even if they have the same uh, uh, motor, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's great. They're so, different. So did you ride? You rode a Shimano, a Bosch, a Yamaha. What did you ride during the week? All Shimano, but uh, different bikes. Focus, uh, Merida, and uh, Husqvarna. What's the best travel for an e-bike for you? For me, I, I love uh, uh, much suspension and or many suspension and uh, 170, it's great. And with our fantastic guide for the week, Werner. Uh, Werner went pretty smoothly, apart from having to deal with a couple of guys who ran out of battery, right? Yeah, I mean, strong riders, they ride also without battery, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and you are a strong rider, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey. you had a lot of time to test it with battery, and now you know how bikes are without battery. It's bound to happen. Hey, so how difficult is it to man to, to plan a route? And we were out for seven hours, right? Yeah, actually, it's quite difficult because also we have uh, quite difficult terrain here, difficult trails, and it's difficult to find a, a solution which is great for uh, a broad uh, part of the, the, the riders, no? So. I think you did it. We had a great mix of roads, we had fire roads, we had technical climbs, we had super technical climbs, yeah. we had massive mountains. I think it had it all, right? Yeah, that's why what I, what I love, no? to have different stuff. You can test the bike on different levels, you, sometimes, sometimes it's playful, sometimes it's challenging, so yeah. nice, no? Now we're in the pits and there's a huge support team behind this event. Each brand has got a big team of mechanics and managers managing the bikes. And I want to get a bit of an insight into behind the scenes of what's been going on this week. So I'm with Felix from Scott. Felix, tell us what's been happening behind the scenes for the last four days. So behind the scenes, uh, mostly we organize the bikes, getting the bikes ready and uh, getting the people satisfied for our product. 
I did actually see you last night with a big pile of beers on the table. Yeah, I think it's uh, our uh, daily evening uh, success to have some beers on the table uh, to celebrate our work we do during the day. So you work hard, play hard, right? Yeah, something like that, yeah. So has it been a holiday for you? Um, not really. So it's a long day, it's 12 hours outside or 13 hours outside, but um, it's a pretty good experience to see how satisfied the people are with our bikes, so fun so, too. So you've had you've had the 120 mil Spark and you've had the 150 mil Genius. What, what's been people's feelings? What are they going for in the mountains? I think mostly they go for the Genius because it's uh, really plush and they can really go uh, full gas down the mountains. So there's been people here from all parts of Europe, some guys from Japan. What's been the feedback from the people? What, what are they looking for? What are they asking about? I think uh, first they're really stoked about the mountains. They're coming from all over the world to do this event and they really enjoy the Alps, the Dolomites and um, also the bikes and also the possibility to ride a different bike every day. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's like, I mean, imagine like me and you had a chance to do this, which we have done, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it's just mental, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I think they're really stoked and for us it's really good to see Oh, I was on a Scott on Monday and I really want to go for a Scott on Friday. So for us, it's the best feedback we can get. What an incredible four days in the mountains with these towering peaks continually surrounding us on every day of the trip. And it's had it all. Different bikes every day, incredible food, the trails were flowing, they were technical, it had everything. Great bunch of riders. I mean, you couldn't actually ask for much more. I've certainly had a great week on the trails here in Northern Italy. And if you fancy an adventure like this, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Obviously, you're gonna love this video, I have no doubt, so give us a thumbs up. If you wanna see more epics, check out 1000 Foot Dead with Sylvain Gintoli over here. Uh, please subscribe if you've not already done so and uh, check out the Shimano e-mountain bike experience.